has been one of the greatest honours of my life. So. <laughs> He's back. James Bond got a little waylaid by the pandemic, but No Time to Die is finally hitting screens. We'll be talking about the 25th Bond film with critic Lisa Nesselson. Hi, Lisa. Hello. But first, that premiere was the most hotly awaited film event of recent months, postponed repeatedly since its original release date in late 2019. Daniel Craig led the cast and crew on the red carpet in London for its first screening. Here's more from them. Was it obvious to everybody else? It's just a great relief. It just, it's such, I mean, it was so important to be able to come and celebrate with all the other cast and crew and, um, and, and, and to get it into the cinemas and we're here. And I, literally a year ago, I didn't think that was going to, uh, going to happen. in the way that it deserves. More than anything, just like, you know, thankful for the Bond fans, which are a massive fan base and have you know, dedicated fans been waiting for those that are going to be uh, out there in the city. So. We tried to make the best film we could, you know, we, we, we put our heart in it. And, um, yeah, I hope people will, will love it. It's going to be... It's going to be very special. So a real sense of relief there from some of the stars in London. It has been six years since James Bond last had a film out, Spectre, and this one was, as we said, much delayed. Was it worth the wait? Well, No Time to Die takes almost three hours to wrap things up nicely, although not quite as nicely as Christo and Jean-Claude's posthumous wrapping of the Arc de Triomphe. It entertains, and I would say it is definitely worth a trip to a movie theater to share in the thrills and, yes, the emotions with a bunch of strangers. We meet some old characters again and some musical notes from prior Bond films. It's sort of sampling itself while straddling old and new. Bond even compliments a few women, quite sincerely, for doing a good job. Whether you're a therapist or a paid assassin, if you're female, you're not permitted to be in this movie unless you're really, really good at what you do. There's lots of hand-to-hand -hand combat, shooting and whiskey drinking, and hardly any sex. And for the first time I'm aware of in a Bond adventure, there's even good stuffed animal continuity. There's more than one villain, and goody, gadgets are back. Oh, some Bond classics there. Well, let's whet our appetites. Here's Daniel Craig and his fellow secret agent, Lashana Lynch, in No Time to Die. Right, this is QDAR. It will map the space as you move through it. Don't touch that. And Smart Blood will track you and your vitals. Bond, you don't mind a shot or two whilst at work, shall we? Well, I haven't had a drink for three or four hour hours. Wow. Doesn't sound like you. Mm. Ow! Good. So, Bond has technically been in business for about 60 years these days. At the beginning of this film, he's retired. He's not been working for Her Majesty's Secret Service for a few years. That's right. Uh, when one retires from most professions, say, window washer or uh, waiter, it's unlikely that the British Secret Service and the CIA will try to convince you to come back to work. So James seems reasonably content sailing and fishing and walking around shirtless in his island paradise. But when he learns that a scary program that should have been shut down was not shut down years ago, he grabs his muscles, oh wait, those are always available, uh, and some firearms and tries to make himself useful without getting killed several times over. In the olden days, it was good enough for a Bond villain to simply be sadistic and twisted and evil. But here, our new villain can actually answer the question, what's your motivation? There are a few things that, that we can be absolutely certain. There are not a lot of things that we can be absolutely certain of in this life. But I am positive that James Bond would make a very poor impression in a public service advertisement about safe driving. Ah, oh, that's true. Yes, no. S speedy but not safe. Now, this is Daniel Craig's final spin in the role, and there has been some speculation that the next Bond should or could be a woman. 
Speculation can be fun, but making Bond a woman makes as much sense as making Wonder Woman a man. Okay. Well, we're moving on to another release now. This is from actor, writer and director Sean Penn. He premiered his latest film, Flag Day, at the Cannes Film Festival in July. It's out in French cinemas. Now, he stars in this with his real-life daughter, Dylan Penn, and in the film they are also father and daughter. Was any of that a good idea? This is a very sincere movie that is sincerely not very good. Flag Day is an earnest dud. It's almost impossible to recommend to anyone I know personally. I admire that he shot it on real celluloid film. It looks great, but the script is fatally flawed in that it doesn't tell the story well enough, and it is a juicy story. Dylan Penn, whose real-life mom is Robin Wright, stars as Jennifer Vogel on whose memoir, Flim Flam Man, the true story of my father's counterfeit life, the screenplay is based. Jennifer's beloved father, John Vogel, was not just a lovable rascal, but mm, the most prolific forger the U.S. has ever known. That's great raw material, but it's either overcooked or undercooked and never really finds that tasty sweet spot. Jennifer's mother keeps telling her daughter and her son, you don't know what your father is really like, and neither do we. Well, I thought she actually did quite a good job in that role, and France 24 got a chance to sit down with her as she accepted the Rising Star Award earlier this month at the Deauville Festival of American Film. Here's what Dylan Penn had to say about working with her father on the movie. Being directed by him is exactly what I expected. Like, very intense. He knows exactly what he wants. He know like, his vision is comp fully realized, no matter what the... Um, obstacle is. So obviously this was an independent film. We had no money. And he forfeited all of his money to put it into the film. I was really nervous to act opposite him. And I kind of felt like maybe he would swallow me in the scene and he's just so powerful and aggressive in his acting. And I felt like as soon as we sat down, our first scene was in the diner. I was I just felt like a, a complete ease come over me. Dad, what do you do? What do you mean, what do I do? I mean, for a living, what do you do for a living? You know what I do for a living? I'm an entrepreneur. My skill is opportunities. Like what? For instance, right now I got a whole raft of businesses. I'm working a, a very broad portfolio. And when you work it that way, you're not dependent on one business to be your bread and butter. Now, I think children can only understand their parents, at least at first, from what's presented to them at face value. We, as viewers, can only take an interest in what's presented to us if it's interesting. Mysterious is fine, but uh, frustratingly opaque is not. As it's presented here, the story just sort of bounces around without being terribly convincing. Oh, that's a shame. Now, we're moving back across the Atlantic to a festival here in France, which is all about celebrating Franco-British relations, specifically British cinema. Tell us more about the Dinard Film Festival of British Film. For 32 editions, the Dinard Film Festival in Brittany has been devoted entirely to British cinema. James Bond, it's worth remembering, is a British export. Dinard is an adorable but relatively tiny setting, and this event has built up such a following that to meet demand, they have to offer five projection spaces, including a deconsecrated church and an inflatable temporary cinema. The program this year consists of six mini menus, each mentored by a special guest. I'm looking forward to the one called Dinard Rocks the Casbah under the watchful eyes and ears of music specialist Mishka Asayas, world-class ecology specialist and environmental activist Nicola Ulo has overseen the Land and Sea program. The six films in competition for the Golden Hitchcock Trophy each represent one of the thematic categories. The Golden Hitchcock, of course, echoed on your shirt. Here's a glimpse of what's on offer in Dinard. This depiction is dangerous. What did a woman's eye on this for? Someone's losing the plot. Let's rewind. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, there are a lot of essays out there about how Bridget Jones is no longer an accurate reflection of her age group. But uh, at the time, she meant a lot in both book and film form, I think, to a lot of people, and Dinard will be wishing the fictional character a happy 20th birthday. New this year, in the wake of having canceled the 2020 edition entirely due to COVID, you can follow along online from anywhere in France. So instead of being on an inlet of the English channel, you can tune into streaming on the Dinard Film Festival channel. Oh, very 2021. Thank you very much for that roundup, Lisa. Well, we'll leave you with the man who we started with, flying the flag for British cinema since 1962. It is, of course, James Bond. Here's a last look at No Time to Die, Daniel Craig's last outing in the role. Otherwise, remember, you can get more movie news on our website and on our social media feeds. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. We don't do this. There will be nothing left to save. I have to finish this. You have a flower, this. Nope.